Welcome 
to the July 2021 semi-annual remembrance service. It's so nice to be able to hold this service in person after needing, it to, needing to do it through video last July and last January. Thank you very much for being here tonight. For many years, our tradition has been to recognize those who are no longer with us through a special program of art, music, poetry, and silent contemplation. Each of the residents who have died have either already had services or will have services at a future time according to their own religious faith. The purpose of this program is to remember them as a colleague, a neighbor, and a friend. As we remember you by Nancy Emmons. <clears throat> it might be when the flags unfurled or when the cold winds blow. Perhaps it's when the morning light reflects on glistening snow. Or maybe when a pretty flower inspires a second look. Or when we hear a child laugh or read a certain book. Or sometimes just a special smile which helps us to get through reminds us of the times we shared, and we remember you. We each have something different, and no memory is quite the same. Perhaps it's someone cheering at an Iowa football game. It might be a special meal. We taste the favorite food. Sometimes it's when we're sound asleep, or in a thoughtful mood. And maybe when we least expect, a certain word brings true, and once again, we're filled with joy when we remember you. Before you know what kindness really is, you must lose things. Feel the future dissolve in a moment, like salt in the weakened broth. What you hold in your hand, what you counted and carefully saved, all this must go so you know how desolate the landscape can be between the regions of kindness. Before you know the kindness as the deepest thing inside, you must know sorrow as the other deepest thing. Tonight we are remembering some very special Oak Knoll friends and how they have contributed to our community. Betty Lucina. Alberta Randall. Nellie Weber. Elizabeth Farr. Marilyn Manley. Charles Ed Hartford.
Vona Robertson. Helen Marquette. Eloise Marshall. David Carew. Russell Monson. Martha Johnston. Jerry O'Brien. Jane E. Anderson. Betty S. Winokur. You Can Shed Tears by David Harkins. You can shed tears because they are gone, or you can smile because they lived. You can close your eyes and pray they will come back, or you can open your eyes and see all that they left for you. Your heart can be empty because you can't see them, or you can be full of the love you shared. You can turn your back on tomorrow and live yes for today, or you can be happy for tomorrow because of yesterday. You can remember only that they are gone, or you can cherish the memory and let it live on. You can cry and close your mind and feel empty. Or you can do what they want. Smile, open your heart, love, and go on.
something beautiful remains. The tide receives but leaves behind bright sea shells on the sand. The sun goes down, but gentle warmth still lingers on the land. The music stops, and yet it echoes on in sweet refrain. For every joy that passes, something beautiful remains. Thank you for coming. There will be a break now between this program and the resident council meeting. Thank you.
welcome to the semi-annual meeting. Um, and this is my third semi-annual meeting. The first two were by video. So as Steve said, it's very nice to look out and see all of you tonight. So thank you all for coming. Um, I'd like to begin this evening by recognizing the residents who participated in our semi-annual, I'm sorry, in our remembrance program. Um, the Remembrance Committee, Jan Down, Kate Caston, and Sue Wakefield. Our readers were Lynn Gardner, Shirley Dickinson, and Nicholas Rossi, and Beth Smith provided the music. And thanks to also to Kim Herring for producing our program brochure tonight. And I want to make a special note. The lovely poem, As We Remember You, that was read by Lynn Gardner, was written by our very own Nancy Emmons. And now I call this meeting to order on Thursday, July 29th, 2021 at 7.25 p.m. I'm Jackie Harp, your resident council chair. Um, and the current members of our resident council are Bill Dickinson, <laughs> Marcia Emmons, Karen Franklin, who couldn't be with us tonight, Doris Hauser, Scott McLeod, I saw Scott in the back, there he is, Joan Nobling, Joan's here, I know she is, I saw her. Oh, there she is, okay. Um, Gary Pesha, Beth Smith, Nancy Sprintz, Bill Stanford, and Wetherill Winder, and our recorder is Ethel Blesch. tonight is the approval of the Wednesday, January 27th, 2021 semi-annual meeting minutes. Um, those were distributed and they also were published on the Oak Knoll app. So I now call for a motion to approve the minutes. Thank you. Um, is there a second? Thank you. Any additions or corrections to the minutes? Then by a show of hands, all in favor, Thank you. Opposed? The motion carries. Our next order of business is an update of committee activity for the past six months. So soon after Oak Knoll opened in 1966, the Association of Oak Knoll Residents draft, drafted a constitution. And one of the articles charged the resident council with appointing the committee chairs for the then existing five committees. Um, they were the Library Committee, the Garden Committee, Games and Entertainment, the Memorial Committee, and something called the Evening Checkup. So that, that was soon disbanded, so we don't have to deal with that one. Um, today there are 18 committees and activity groups, and the chairs are elected by, by the members of each committee. And our Vice Chair, Bill Dickinson, is the Resident Council Liaison for all of the committees. Bill, would you like to give an update? Thank you. Well, since our COVID restrictions have been eased, our committees have, a lot of our committees have really gotten back to uh, activities. And I don't want to start with the gardening committee, which is a really fantastic group. They ordered, uh, Joe Benda ordered 3,200 annuals that were ordered and distributed and planted by our gardeners and our 14 master gardeners. And on the East Campus, many residents along with site manager Steve Cuppy worked for hours weeding the newly sodded lawns with an invasion of gut garlic mustard, which is a mess over there. Um, but they did a wonderful job. It was a terrible job. Another committee that sprang into action is the Welcoming Committee. Three members from Oak Knoll East were added and helped in welcoming, uh, welcoming and orienting new East members to have a smooth transition into the new homes. One of the really lovely ideas that came up was a suggestion made by uh, new Kathleen, uh, new resident Kathleen Rehnquist. And in order to promote a sense of community for residents of Oak Knoll East and one UP, 
The community handmade nearly four, 40 May baskets with assorted sweet treats and distributed them on May 1. Co-chairs Linda and Ray Mustin just think that this might be a start of a new tradition. I hope so. <laughs> the market committee is new and got it started really at the beginning of a COVID lockdown when uh, we couldn't, nobody could go out and get groceries and things. And so we were ordering groceries in and staff and residents were delivering them. The market as we know it really got started in October or November of last year. And the success of this great open old perk is thanks in, in large part to the leadership of hard work of, and hard work of Bruce Titus, along with co-chairs Jackie Harb, Oz Creston, and yours truly. We also have eight really uh, wonderful volunteers who keep the market running. If you haven't been to the market, I highly recommend it you do because it's really a complete little mini market. We've ad we keep adding daily um, items, uh, groceries, produce, I think the best lettuce in town. Um, <laughs> we have all kinds of snacks, most importantly ice cream treats, and Kelowna bars, which are our biggest seller. If you haven't had a Kelowna bar, you have to come in and try it. With the resumption of in-person programming, Mari Greb and her event readers, and they were helping tonight, are back in full force, reading and assisting residents and guests attending our, our, uh, our events on both campuses here and at East. The library committee on both campuses have been busy developing and maintaining the numerous libraries and collections. Representatives of the main campus were very helpful to the East Campus library chairs and committee members in setting up their library, which is now on the way to be well stocked with not only books, but a very large puzzle collection. These East Campus Library activities have been spearheaded by co-chairs Karen Chapel and Barbara Braddock. On the main campus, the old Stitch and Chatter activity group was disbanded with the death of, sadly, of, of Sarah Wolfson, but has been reborn as Button and Hems. And, and, and the group is now located in a much, much less claustrophobic area right off the Spring Layup Library. Another wonderful group that we have. Under the leadership of staff advisor Dave Anson, the program committee has been busy restarting the cultural, educational, and recreational programs that we all so missed last year. These programs, along with a wonderful courtyard concert series, are now back in full swing on both campuses. The recycling committees on both campuses are hard at work getting materials ready for pickup by our vendor Johnson County Refuse. Recycling takes a lot of work, and we really give special thanks to all the volunteers who help out each day. The Community Connections Committee, which was formerly known as the Newcomers Committee, has been very active once again in organizing and coordinating the monthly programs featuring our staff members. These programs are aimed both at new and old residents who are now either on the main or east campus and are live streamed and recorded on the Oak Knoll app. This group is also responsible for the producing and, and editing of the Oak Knoll Connector, which really started by Mary Schlumberg uh, during the COVID. It was kind of COVID times. And then it, as we got out of it, we kind of acquiesced into the Oak Knoll Connector, which comes out twice a month, features a myriad of topics that you all know, and activities of interest to all of the Oak Knoll residents. The topics range from gardening, planting, hallway art, Iowa history, homespun topics. Two things that are off the, off, the, uh, off the table, though, are religion and politics. We don't get into it. <laughs> <laughs> a new activity is a memoir group, which was formed to exchange essays and thoughts regarding the formation of personal memoirs. Oz Crescent has this group, which is open to all. I've mentioned the East Campus Library and Recycling Committees. There also is an art committee dedicated to hallway art and an activity group called Craft and Chant. That really wraps up most of the the activities that, that have been going for, the, I know there's other things going on, but these are, you know, are, have been pretty busy. 
Finally, there's going to be a meeting of all the committee chairs in October or in August to review the budgets that we have established for fiscal year 2021-22, to review activities from the past year, and to talk about what's going to happen in the next uh, between the next uh, this meeting and the next one. And in a total uh, a committee activity sign-up sheet will be sent to everyone in September. And that's your chance to join our committee, and we hope you do. There are a lot of committees that need help, or we'd like to have a, not need help, but we'd like to add people to it, and particularly from Oakland East. Um, that's a, a, a very important uh, objective of the, of the council. So now I'd like to ask all the chair members to stand. All right. And I want to extend my sincere thanks to all of you um, on behalf of the resident council for all the great work you've done. Uh, you really make Oak Knoll the wonderful place that it is to live in. So thank you, thank you very much. And now I'll turn it over to Steve. I have the pleasure of introducing all the new residents who have joined the Oakdale community since our semi-annual meeting in January. We have 34 new households and a total of 48 new residents uh, that have moved into Oakdale uh, across uh, all of our different buildings. Um, I'll introduce everyone by the building that they're in. And as your name is called, if you're able to stand, please do so or wave so that we can start to put names and faces together. Um, so in the central building, uh, we've had uh, Vi Darcy and Bonnie Reedy, and, and Bonnie is right, right next to Vi. <laughs> in the Benton building, David Bulgarelli, I haven't seen David, uh, Ernie Pascarella, and Anna, Anna Straneri. There's Anna. In the court building, uh, one new resident, and that is Ellen Colony. Um, in the George building, uh, Alan Mark. In the Spring building, uh, Sandra Keller. <laughs> and also Carolyn Pesurb and Johnny Bryan. Okay. At one university place, uh, Lee and Fran Gruenhaupt. In the back corner there. And also Ann Howard Jones. And then the long list at East, we have uh, Judy Bean, Warren and Mary Ellen Bow, Alicia Brown Mathis, uh, Tom Carlisle and Barbara Booth, uh, Dale and Cindy Kreider, Uh, Michael Feiss and Catherine Cole. Uh, Dory Forkenbrock. Hopefully they're watching at home and, and <laughs> <laughs> seeing where I'm going to be introduced. Uh, Roxy Fudge and Lee Thorson. I didn't see them. Uh, Steve Hall. I know the next people are here. Uh, Mark and Margaret Heffron. Uh, Dave and Sue Johansson, Lois Lowenberg, Mike Monroe, I know Mike is here, uh, Jane Murphy, Bob and Barbara Wolf. Where's Barbara? 
Hazel Seba, Jeff and Judy Stevens, Shelton and Ann Stromquist, Kristen Summerwell, Pete and D. Vanderhoff, Woody and Ruby Watson, Paul Weller and Sarah Rines Weller, and last but not least, Ann Zirkel. So, so welcome to all of you. Our program tonight is an introduction of Oak Knoll's Board of Directors members. Uh, the board consists of 15 members plus two advisory members. There are a variety of professional backgrounds represented on the board, including physicians, clergy members, attorneys, bankers, developers, engineers, and other accomplished business and administrative professionals. Board member terms are three years, and most of our board members will serve two consecutive three-year terms for a total of six years. Yesterday morning was the first in-person board meeting, so we were in this half of the community room, uh, the first in-person board meeting that we've had since February of 2020. So it had been 17 months since we were all together. Our board members participate in monthly board meetings, which we held via Microsoft Teams for the last 17 months, uh, at 7 a.m. on the fourth Wednesday of each month. They also serve on at least one committee, and the five committees are the Executive Committee, Finance and Audit, Health Services, Nominating, and Planning and Development. I know at least five of our board members are in attendance tonight, and I'll have each of them come up and share just a little bit about their backgrounds uh, with you so that you can kind of get a, an appreciation for who is serving in this governing body of Oak Knoll. Rick Foss. I'm completing my second term and I am serving as past president this year. And some of you may recall me in my, my past role as city engineer and public works director for the city of Iowa City. So I'm one of those engineers that Steve talked about. Uh -huh. and, and I'll share with you in, in over 30 years of, of helping to manage a large city and then six years being a part of this organization, which is really a small city in and amongst itself. Uh, that, that this place is very well run, and after six years of being a part of it, I feel very good about it. So thank you for the opportunity to be on your board. Good evening. Uh, my name is Ann Ricketts, and I'm Associate Vice President for Research at the University of Iowa. Uh, I've been on the board for two years. And I first came to know Oak Knoll by virtue of occupying the office next to Cheryl Reardon. You may remember Cheryl as a great board member and president of the board. And Cheryl and I are on a lot of boards and committees, but in talking to her, I was always struck that, that the Oak Knoll board was somehow a higher calling than all the other committee work we did. And I have to say I found that to be true as well. Um, and I have one other source of inspiration, uh, my, my own mother, who turned 95 yesterday. And so as any issue comes across the board table, I, I always think, how, what would be the implication of this issue or policy for my mother? So like Rick, I thank you for letting us serve on your, your board. My name is Jeanette Hall, and I've been on the board since January, so I'm relatively new, but not new to Iowa City. I was born and raised in Iowa City and have many memories of Oak Knoll. Um, many, many years ago, as we were at, when my brothers and I were children, 
My mother actually worked as a private duty nurse at Oak Mill. Oh. Um, I, I, I've also had the opportunity to work in the life care retirement business. I worked for a company in Kansas City that developed life care retirement communities, so I'm very familiar with the entire concept. I do have to say that Oak Knoll is at the top of the list of, of the facilities that I've seen. Thank you. I talk for a living. Um, <laughs> And nobody asked Dr. Rossi, nobody pays any attention to what I say. But <laughs> I'm Father Steve Widow, the pastor at St. Mary's uh, Catholic Church downtown. Um, I'm in my second term, and this is an incredible place. So well run and has been for years. But the cooperation that uh, you see, board members, and all of the wonderful people here that are inhabitants of this great place, it's just amazing to watch. And I'm privileged to share with all of you the experience of being an Oak Knoll community person. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening, I'm Tom Bender. And uh, I've lived in Iowa City all my life. And my experience with Oak Knoll goes back quite a ways because my grandmother, uh, moved here in 1968, Nadine Bender, yeah. and uh, my mother, Anita Bender, who passed on a few years ago, spent quite a few, number of years here. Uh, so I go back a long ways uh, with Oak Knoll uh, for that reason. Uh, I went to school here at the University of Iowa, graduated in 76 with a, a business degree, and uh, I studied uh, insurance and real estate primarily. Um, went right to work after that with my father, uh, I got married in the 80s to my lovely wife, Susie, and, and the reason I bring that up is because my mother-in-law is right in front of me. <laughs> Shirley Davidson, who I, I refer to as my favorite mother-in-law. <laughs> uh, I've done a lot of things in Iowa City over the years. I, uh, I served on the school board for a while. I was on the Riverside Theater Board, Airport Commission, Park and Recs, New Optimus Club, a number of things like that. Um, but it wasn't until I came to Oak Knoll that I found my true passion. Um, I first joined the Oak Knoll board in 2008, and I served two years, and then because of the special circumstances concerning the construction of this building, they asked me to stay on for an extra year, so I served seven years there. And uh, by the way, isn't this building really nice? This is a, that was a real joy. Uh, and then, uh, uh, in 2016, I was invited to get on the uh, Oak Knoll Foundation, and that was a, a very positive experience, too. Uh, while I was there, certainly not thanks to me, but we, we got over a million dollars in assets and still climbing, and uh, uh, we've been able to do a lot of things with that organization. But then in January, I was asked to rejoin this board, so I left the foundation and came back. So the question is, is why do I like Oak Knoll so much, and uh, as it was mentioned by other people on the board, the level of excellence here is amazing. And uh, these people are dedicated, they love what they do, and uh, they're always trying to improve. And uh, the other thing is, I like to tell people that Iowa City's finest live at Oak Knoll. Yes. <laughs> and I really believe that, because the talent we have in this room and the people continue to contribute in retirement. And that really is a, a, a model to me on how to grow old gracefully and uh, is a real asset. So, uh, the other thing is every time I leave this building, I have a smile on my face. So that, I really do love it. And finally, I will tell you that Susie and I have our name on the list. You've <laughs> been warned. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Sean Wandrew. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to be here this evening. Uh, it was a, a beautiful remembrance service, and I'm grateful to have the opportunity to, to, to be part of it. Um, I'm an advisory member to the board. Uh, I, I came to Iowa City in 2006 and uh, have, have been a resident ever since. 
I joined uh, Bob Downer's law firm in uh, 2013 and uh, have had the opportunity in working with Bob to uh, work, work with uh, Steve and, and Kim and, and the rest of the Oatmeal uh, family. Um, have, have really enjoyed that. My, my practice is primarily transactional. Uh, I'm a proud father and uh, husband. Uh, my wife and I have a two-year-old uh, little girl at home. Uh, my most recent victory was convincing my parents to move to Iowa City. Uh, so uh, very happy that they chose to do that in, in 2020. Um, with, with working with, with Bob Downer and, and the rest of the, the Bearden Law Firm, it was impressed upon me in a very early time in my practice what a special community uh, Oak Knoll is. And, and I know that it is very important to, to Bob and uh, from the experiences that I've had, it's, it's very easy to see why. And so I'm um, relatively uh, young in my practice, but I'm very much looking forward to contributing to the, the Oak Knoll family and the board in any way that I can. Thank you. So thanks to the six of our board members who are here live in person. I want to tell you a little bit about the people who aren't here. Uh, Jim Cantrell currently serves as our vice president. Uh, Jim uh, is a senior vice president at Midwest One Bank. John Fieselman is a retired pulmonologist, uh, and John uh, has been on the board for about five years now. Uh, he is the chairperson of our Health Services Committee. Matt Hayek is a local attorney and former mayor of Iowa City. Uh, Peter Caboli is a physician who works primarily at the Veterans Hospital. Uh, John McKinstry is a retired uh, pastor. Uh, Ann Parker uh, worked, worked in her family's business for uh, several years and currently works uh, for the Iowa Women's Foundation and Ann is our board president this year. Rebecca Porter um, is an ethicist at the University of Iowa Hospital and Clinics um, and uh, a nurse, nurse practitioner, thank you. Um, Mel Shaw is an attorney here locally. Tiffany Shaw, no relation, uh, but same last name. Uh, Tiffany Shaw is the Chief Operating Officer for the University Foundation. Robin Malenta is President of West Music. And last uh, is Bob Downer, and Bob has served in, as an advisor or as a board member to, uh, to Oak Knoll uh, since sometime in the late 1960s. So <laughs> you can imagine that he has served this community for more than 50 years. And um, he, we believe, will be retiring from his advisor role uh, at the end of this year. And we will throw a huge thank you celebration for all of Bob's service to the, to the Oakdown community. So before I give up the microphone, um, my friend here loves surprises. Kim Bergen Jackson is in the front row. Yesterday, she sent an email out to all of us on the leadership team and this email included a five minute uh, Saturday Night Live video skit about a surprise party. And I thought for sure she knew what the surprise was going to be tonight, but I really don't think she does. So, <laughs> so I do want to do a special recognition for Kim. You've heard from her every other week throughout the pandemic as we've done our video updates to keep you informed. <laughs> Kim has worked so hard over the past 17 months. She read everything that came out from Public Health, the Centers for Disease Control, the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, the Department of Inspections and Appeals, and our leading age associations. She digested all this information and created policies and standards for Oak Hill residents and staff. She led the efforts to educate people about the vaccine. 
and she coordinated with public health and with Walgreens to get our residents and employees vaccinated as soon as doses became available. Kim's efforts led to a 100% vaccination rate among our residents and a 98.6% vaccination rate for our employees. We kept COVID out of our entire resident population for the first 14 months of the pandemic. The one resident case that we've had occurred three months after the resident had been vaccinated and we've successfully contained it without any other residents being infected. Kim was concerned about our lost revenue during the pandemic. We intentionally didn't let anyone from outside the Oak Knoll community come into our health center in case we needed the spaces to care for residents during an outbreak. Fortunately, that outbreak never came. But Kim sought out ways to make up for the lost revenue. She found an opportunity to lead training sessions for nursing homes across the state and ended up leading 122 nursing homes through a 16-week course related to COVID prevention and containment. Through this effort, Kim is directly responsible for over $500,000 of consulting revenue that was paid to Oak Knoll in the past eight months. Thank you. You are a shining star, and we are all so grateful for the work you've done. To help celebrate and recognize Kim, we have some nice refreshments set up in the back of the room. Thank you again for attending the program tonight.